Hey everybody, welcome to Your Prophetic Word. It's your friend Madra. As you come in, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and stay tuned for a powerful word from the Spirit of the Lord. Because your spirit is the part of you that is connected to Father God, because he is a spirit. He's the father of spirits. So when he deals with you, he's going to deal with you with your spirit. And so you need your spirit strong and you need your soul strong so that your soul can decipher what your spirit is saying to you. So that's what we're going to start right there. So we're going to pray about if we need to fast. That's between you and God and your medical doctor. If you have a medical condition, there are many things you can fast and pull away from. You don't have to fast all day. You can fast, a, you know, an hour or however the spirit leads you. But consecration is something we all can do. We all can pull away from the media and news and things that can direct our attention away from what the Lord is trying to communicate us to our souls through our spirit. So we're going to cut the noise down. That's going to be a part of our assignment. You know, you're going to you can pick a day, you can pull away from things and you're going to get your mind right so that you can begin to hear what the spirit is saying to your soul. That way you can make sound judgments, sound decisions, right? Second Chronicles 20 and 3 said Jehoshaphat sought the Lord because what certain things have to be broken in the spirit to get a breakthrough sometimes. So, OK, we've talked about everything has a voice. We talked about the spirit. We talked about consecrating ourselves. Now, before we get into the seven ways the Holy Spirit can speak to us, let's talk about the things that can make it hard for us to hear God. We're kidding ourselves if we don't think that there can be interference, because that's why a lot of Christians are actually walking around not hearing God. They're not even conscious of the fact that there are major things and roots that can keep them from hearing from God. You know, some we have to look at seven roots to all demonic activity in our lives. Yes, there are demons. The Bible speaks about them. Whatever the Bible says is true. We can't ignore the fact. We can't ignore the elephant in the room that there are there is demonic activity and spiritual warfare that's going on on a daily basis. We're just protected by angels. We're just protected by God. And some of us are more aware of what's going on than the others. But that does not mean that it's not going on. And so we have to look at the roots to demonic activity and God can deliver you. If you're having trouble in any of these seven areas, you know, you may have to seek deliverance from the Lord. You may have to ask God, how can you overcome these things? And he'll help you. That's another work of the Holy Spirit. He will deliver you and comfort you and bring you through things that you can't do on your own. You need the power of the Holy Ghost to deliver you from mindsets and strongholds that keep you bound because Jesus died for our freedom, right? Yes, he said he died for us to be free. And whatever he, whatever curse he broke off you on that cross, he wants you to know about it. And you don't have to be in bondage. You can be free. You can be free today in Jesus' name. So we destroy the root. We just renounce all of the roots that hold us bound. Number one is pride. We all struggle with pride. I mean, God says in his word that none have fallen short. You don't have to be ashamed. You don't have to be condemned. All we have to do is to go before God, confess our sins, ask him to help us and to heal us of the wound so that we can close the door to the enemy and keep moving because you can get delivered one day and you don't hold on to your deliverance by not living right. And you can open the door right back up to the enemy to come into your life to wreak havoc in a certain area. Life is not going to be perfect, but it sure could be a whole lot better when you're living a lifestyle of holiness and trying to do the right thing before God. It's a, it's a noticeable difference. I'm telling you what I know. Number two is covetousness. Don't look across the fence thinking that the grass is always greener on the other side. 
Be content with what you have. Be grateful for what you have. Don't worry about what someone has or have over you or what they got before you. It can open many doors for you in the spirit just by being grateful and thankful by what God has done in your life and being grateful by what he's doing in other people's lives. So don't covet because this can be a, a very powerful stronghold for the enemy to work in your life.